Timothy chapter, chapter 6 We're going to read this responsibly Okay, are you there? Okay, let us read this I'll read verse 1 You read the next one Let us, let us many servants as, as are, are under the yoke Count their own masters worthy of all honor That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we, ca we carry nothing out. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare, and a snare, and into many foolish and her f hurtful lust which drawn men into destruction and perdition. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. I give thee church in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate, witness a good confession. Which is, which in his time he shall shew, who is blessed and only uh, potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Trust them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Laying up in store of, uh, for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Altogether, which some professing have heard concerning the faith, grace be with thee. Amen. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this morning or this afternoon. We are so grateful for your faithfulness, and we are so thankful, God, for all the preachings and the teachings this morning that we have received. We are so blessed because these are your words. Thank you for using your servants. And even this right at this time, O oh God, let your name be continually be, uh, lifted up in our midst. Praying, Holy Spirit, continue to help me as I preach thy word of God, because without you I cannot do anything. Lord, please bless thy people through thy words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, actually, uh, we're not going to tackle the whole chapter in this uh, in First Timothy chapter 6. But before that, I just want to thank God for his uh, faithfulness. Uh, and just want to testify uh, for the provision of God. Actually, uh, last Wednesday, uh, on the birthday of my son, he... He officially <laughs> received his, uh, what do you call that, the <laughs> baby <laughs> scholarship uh, support for his uh, first uh, semester. So grateful. And I just want to thank the church for praying for that. 
And uh, although just like uh, Pastor saying, be patient, be patient. And if you we, we, we will trust God, God will continue to honor that patient in waiting for him. So I just want to thank God for that. So uh, grateful for his faithfulness in our life. So even in, in this afternoon, I am going to share. Actually, uh, when I will be on uh, verse 10 of this uh, chapter and uh, tell you and give you the context of this uh, book in First Timothy, why Timothy is in this church and what, what is uh, the task that he need to do. But and after that, we're going to go to verse 10 in this uh, chapter. So here we can see that Paul uh, sent Timothy at the church at Ephesus because there was a problem. There, there was a lurking wrong doctrine that being taught to the, to the brethren in that place. So Paul, Paul uh, he, uh, he, what do you call this? He's the one who discipled Timothy. And when he learned, he is the one who sent him also to, to do this thing for the Lord. So when, he, when Paul wrote to Timothy, telling, to, uh, telling uh, Timothy to uh, confront in this, play, in this church, to confront the leaders. Why? The leaders became corrupt. If you go to verse 10, it says here, For the love of man is the root of all evil, which will some coveted after they have heard from, from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The leaders betrays Jesus, Jesus' teachings about contentment. They betray that. And Paul tells Timothy about the wealthy people to be rich in good works. In verse 17 and 18, it says, you charge them that are rich in this world, that they be, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. 18, that they do good, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to dis distribute, willing to communicate. Willing to commu communicate means willing to help or willing to give. So here we can see that these are the things that are being uh, tackled in this uh, chapter, in the closing uh, letter of Paul, in this chapter, in chapter 6. So here we can see how Paul told Timothy to confront these leaders. Because these leaders, they are being straight from the true faith. They are, they, are now being, uh, they are now teaching something that is not according to the will of God. They are teaching these things. And if you're going to notice, in verse 10, this is a very uh, common verse, that, and we know that especially the praise for the love of money is the root of all evil. And we know that. That is a very common place that we always, that we always uh, say, we always hear from the pulpit or from anyone that preaches or anyone that's here when it comes to the money. They're saying that it is not the money itself that the root of all evil, but loving it. Loving the money is the root of all evil. And if you're going to continue on this, you will see that which we, while some coveted after, they have heard from the faith. You know why these people love money so much? Because they, are sta they started to depart from the right faith. If you're going to see it, if you're going to study it, or you, you, if you're going to take the root of all this by loving the money, because they have departed from the, their faith, from trusting the Lord Jesus Christ, from being contented with what they have. That is the reason why. Even as, if you're going to uh, look on the things in this world, it may, it may mislead us. It may derail us. And if you will not focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, chaos, problems will start to happen in our life. But look at this. Look at the, the opposite of this. But if you keep on looking unto the Lord Jesus Christ, even though a lot of problems, we can still continue in doing it because the Lord is the one giving us strength. Even in, in Colossians chapter 3, if I'm mistaken, uh, look and uh, do not focus your, your mind on the things on the earth. Focus your mind on the things that in, are that in heaven. So uh, I'm not going to share this because someone here loving the money, no, but for us to see the importance of our faith in our life as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us, we need money. No one here will never say, I do not need money. If you do not need money, you give it to us. 
and we're going to use it in the ministry. So it's not that. I'm not saying, oh, someone here loving, no. But for us as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we must be assured of our faith. Whom are we trusting? Because if you're going to study verse 10, they started loving money because they are falling from their faith, falling from trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. Or all of us, we want, to, we want to earn. That's why we, the reason why we work to have money to support our family, to support the ministry. And that is the right thing to do. But for us to make this, it's, the person is like saying, if you focus on these things and this is your life, it's wrong. But it's saying that, but you must check your faith. The reason why you have erred from the faith, it is because you are not trusting the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. And the, the sad thing is that they are teaching this on, inside the church at Ephesus. They're trying to teach these people. That's why Paul said, you go there, you confront these people. These are leaders. You confront them. In verse 3 and 5, it says here, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the words and words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness. This, they're trying to avoid. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doing, but doubting about questions and stripes. Or words, where of cannot envy, they're started there, strife, railings, evil surmisings, verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, they became corrupt, and destitute of the truth, Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. See? See the command? Sometimes people, or sometimes even Christian, they will say, oh, why are you so judgmental not to be with these people? No, because it is the command of God. Not to be with these people. Bad, uh, bad company corrupts good what? Character. Who you with? Sasabihin nila kung sino ka na rin. The, 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 the famous word that they always say, uh, 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 birds with the same feathers, flocks together. But here Paul says, uh, Paul says to Timothy, in verse number, uh, number 6, says, from such withdraw thyself. Why? They are not doing the will of God. They are now starting to follow the things of this world. That is what the Paul is saying here. And what does in Hebrews 13, 5 says? This is a very familiar uh, verse. Don't worry, this is not a long sermon, so please don't sleep. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, What? I will never leave thee, nor what? Forsake thee. The Lord said, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. It's like Jesus is saying, you, here he says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. It's like Jesus saying, you already have me, what else do you need? If you already have Jesus in your life, and you are still looking for something, you don't have Jesus. I'm not saying that we don't need this, we don't need to eat, we don't need to earn, no, I'm not saying that. Because when we have Jesus in our life, we are already having everything, even eternal life. I'm not saying that when you have Jesus, no, you will not get hungry. No, we will get hungry and we need to buy food. No. What I'm trying to say, you will be contented in your life. Because only Jesus can feel the longingness of our hearts. He's the only one can feel that. No more, no less. Only him. What does it says in Romans 8.32? Romans 8.32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God was able to give his son, what else that he cannot give to us? The only reason that we cannot receive those things, it is because we are not trusting him because our faith is not in him anymore or maybe failing or maybe weak what does it says in genesis chapter 28 verse 15 genesis 28 15 says and behold i am with thee 
and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. Verse I, Deuteronomy 3, 31, 6. It says here, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he it is that that go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That's our God. He will always be with us. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, it says, this, And the Lord, he it is that that go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, Fear not, neither be dismayed. That is the word of God is saying. But to be honest with you, all of us, just like what uh, uh, Brother Adi said in his post, that although sometimes we feel fear, it is normal. But for us to dwell in that fear is something wrong. Because we have Jesus Christ in our life. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. Although we feel fear sometimes. But in our fear, we are getting strong because we trust in the Lord. What does Joshua 1 5 says? Joshua 1 5 There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. The promise of God. As I help Moses, I will also help you. And one more thing, he said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. That is the promise of God in our life. Yes, it was mentioned in the Old Testament. It was uh, mentioned to Joshua. It was mentioned in Israel. But this, even until now, this is the promise of God. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That is something that we can hold on. That is something that we can trust. That is a very strong foundation for us to cling on. All of us, we have our weaknesses. But sometimes, when it comes to some, when we face problem in our life, if we keep on standing on our conviction in holding on to the word of God, we can stand because of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no strength that we can stand on any problem, only because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you hear? What does Hebrews 13, 5 teaches us? Hebrews 13, 5. What does it teaches us? Don't make love of my uh, grammar, but I hope it's correct. Okay, what does Hebrews 13.5 teach us? This is what the Hebrews 13.5 teaches. What we should have not and what we should be. What we should not have is a covetous heart. It would lead us to evil things. And what we should be, we should be contented with what we have. But later on, what is that thing that we have in our life that make us contented? Okay, here, not because of the things that we have. Do you know that we are contented because not of the things that we have? You may have beautiful house, you may have cars, you, have, you may have money in the bank. But that, those things are not the things that make us contented. Do you know why we are being contented? Because we have Jesus in our life. Because, because if there is no difference from them and us as a believer, where is Jesus then? If there is no contented, because they can, we can have what they have, and we can have what they have also. We can have what they have, and they can have what we have also. But if there is no difference, what is the difference? The difference is that we are being contented because we have Jesus in our life. And that is the big difference, that thing that we have, as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a big difference in us. Look at this. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Look at this. But godliness with content is great gain, right? But go back to verse 5. Go back to verse 5. It says here, Perverse disputing, disputing of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness from such turn away, turn, uh, from such withdraw thyself. 
but go to the to the praise to the praise supposing that gain is godliness look at the world or even the problems that even the, the, the hurtful things that even believers the thinking because they have a lot of things they are godly have you noticed that especially now in the philippines oh now i have this montero or whatever what they have and they're saying see how god blessed me see how how blessed i am i have all of these things thinking that they are godly when they have those things in their life no because for us to be godly we need to be contented we need to be godly and that is not godly in, in having all those things what is that thing that you are not being contented and sometimes they boast about it if you're going to analyze verse 6 and verse 5 they are opposite they're opposite supposing that they, they are thinking that having thinking they are godly see see the difference from there and these people we see these people now that is the sad thing of course any one of us even our pastor any deacons or the, the members we all need finances we all know we all need these things in our life to survive to continue on doing the things for the lord but if you are thinking i have all these things and you don't have this because you are not godly someone said that right because you are don't have this you don't have these things you are not godly there's what's in their mind thinking that when they have these things in their life they are now being godly no they are not not being contented that is the problem with them we go back to verse 10 let's go back to verse 10 in first in first uh, timothy chapter 6 verse 10 it says here love of money who love at the money the leaders there they have heard from the faith imagine what they do in the church imagine those what are they trying to destroy they are now destroying the teaching of jesus for us to have jesus in our life we need to be contented but for them they already have they are already rich right where's that uh, when paul says uh what does it says in verse 17 it says trust them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the lobby but in the living god who give it us richly uh, all things to enjoy but for them in verse 10 they do not enjoy that they have what is that says in verse 10 and pierce themselves through with many sorrows why it is because it is not from god they have heard from the faith and now they want to enjoy the world no you cannot we cannot do that sabi nga sa tagalog di ka, di ka pwedeng mamangka sa dalawang ilog that's what is saying there if you are rich then be rich for what what he says be rich for what that they do good that they be rich in good works that was commanded to us it not only them we may all fail sometimes but in gener generally speaking as a changed man as a as a as we have the new man inside we are commanded to do good because we are already saved not to do good to be saved we are saved and now we must do good and that is our testimony in our life okay uh did i okay let us go to first timothy chapter 1 verse 19 timothy 1 19 it says here holding faith and and a good conscience which some have put away concerning faith have made shipwreck that is what they did in first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 don't worry so in my in my sermon this is the last verse but i have conclusion <laughs> okay verse 1 first timothy 4 1 says here now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from their faith giving heed to the seducing spirit and doctrines of the devil that's what they follow the doctrine of the devil so here we can see what what 
Paul is trying to tell Timothy, these people now are being misled. Why? They are departing from their faith and trying to follow the pattern of the world. That cannot be. We know that the Bible says, being filled with the world is what? Enmity with God. Enmity, kaaway, enemy with God. And when we know an enemy, there is no enemy, there is, this, not, this thing cannot be happened. If the, someone is your enemy, they can never love you. They might kill you instead because they are enemy. Same thing what the Bible is saying. This world, uh, when we love this world, we fight against God. But as a Christian, we don't do that. Although we need to, be, to share them the gospel, but if we get mixed friends with them, with the world, we are enmity with God. So here we see the, that importance of that, that, that we can see the importance of our faith as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here, the love of money, actually that is not the main problem. The main problem is that they erred from their faith. That's why they started to love money. They started to be covetous. So I hope and I pray that is, uh, we have uh, learned the lesson from that. But here, in my conclusion, God knows our heart. God knows our hearts. Even right now, he knows that. Let me give two persons from the Bible that, uh, that met Jesus in their life with the different uh, response by the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. This one, it may be, I don't know, kung baka but I just want to give you an exa- two example. If, let us go to Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 23. Mark 10, 17 to 23. It says, it says here, And when he was gone, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments to do, not to commit adultery, not to kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all this have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take up the cross, and follow me. And he was so sad, and he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possession. Last verse 23, And Jesus looked, ra- looked round about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. So here, what's the context here? What is the story here? Meeting, Jesus meeting this good person, he's rich, and he want to follow Jesus, right? He want to follow Jesus. But the problem, he cannot let go of his riches. Jesus said, you have to, what, that, what Jesus said? Jesus said, you sell what? Everything. And then when you sell everything, you give it to the poor, right? That's what's from the Bible. Give it to the poor, and after you give it to the poor, you take up the cross, and then what? Follow me, right? But what, 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 did, what is his response? He cannot let it go. Because those things are dear, they are dear to him. Those things that he has in life, those are, are his life. He cannot let go of the riches. He let go of Jesus, but he cling on to his riches. That's why he cannot enter the kingdom. That's why Jesus said, it's hard for the rich man to, go, to enter into the heaven, right? That's the context. Now, let us go to Luke chapter 19. Okay, remember, the Lord says, you sell all. In Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to verse 9. Luke 19, 1 says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. 
he is also rich. Verse 3, And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not, could not for, for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was to, he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for, to, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Seven. When, and when they saw it, they all murmured. Ito yung mga mausisa eh. Saying that he was going to be to be guest with a man that is a sinner? And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, This day salvation come to his house for as much, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Why did I read these things? If you are being uh, observant, you look at what Jesus said to the rich young man and what Jesus said to Zacchaeus. Uh, okay, I will, anyway, we know the story. What is the difference between the rich young man and Zacchaeus? The, the difference is this. The Lord says to the rich young man, you sell everything. After you sell everything, you give it to the poor. After you give it to the poor, you, you take up your cross and follow me. But you try to observe what Zacchaeus said to the Lord Jesus Christ. What does he say? Lord, even half of my wealth, I will give it. Somebody, on verse, one, verse 8, uh, 7, 7. Ah, oh, um, Okay, okay. Okay, here. Zacchaeus said, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. What Jesus said to the young man, you sell everything, give it to the poor. But uh, Zacchaeus, he will give it to the poor. But the question is this, why did Jesus accept what Zacchaeus said? Zacchaeus is only giving half. It's clear, half. And he said, if I, if I uh, do done something, some accusation, I will pay it for full. But Jesus required the young man to sell everything. When Zacchaeus said, only half. No, no, actually it's not half. What Jesus saw in the heart of Zacchaeus is that Zacchaeus is willing to give up everything just for the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you noticed that? But Jesus required the young man to sell everything because Jesus knew that is his life. But Jesus knew that Zacchaeus, the life of Zacchaeus is trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the difference between the two. Even as right now, you have seen the faith of Zacchaeus even in verse 10. In verse 10, the reason why they were misled because of their faith they, misled, they were misled because of their wrong uh, doctrine and departing from the right faith. But here we see the faith of Zacchaeus, how we trusted God. You know, when we put our trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we trust Him and when we put our life, everything to Him, He will accept it. If you're going to look at it, you said half. That's clear, half. But Jesus accept, accepted it because Jesus knew the heart of Zacchaeus. You know, before I close, even right now, God knows our heart, how we trust him, that in spite of everything that we, are ex we experience, in all the things that we, uh, the things that we are, if I may say, we are lacking, God knows that. He just wants us to put our faith in him because God knows when we trust him 
we will be contented with everything. So I hope and I pray this gives you an uh, encouragement and I hope and I pray that uh, these things will continue to uh, give us the strength to keep on keeping on for the let us all stand up.